Welcome to Community College Softball on Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, we have a hot one for you today, and it's not because of the weather. It's Mount Sac takes on your Cerritos Falcons here on Sportsnet, USA.net. As of right now, both these teams are going to make the playoffs. Mount Sac sitting on top of the hill, Cerrito charging from behind. It should be an exciting softball game today here on Sportsnet, USA. Dot net. Cody's got her team playing well. Ruby Rojas once again has Mount Sac where everybody thinks Mount Sac belongs at the top of the heap here on Sportsnet USA.net. And Espinosa will lead things off for Mount Sac today. Janice Espinosa playing third base for your Mounties. Espinosa batting 438 this season. Drives went into right field, so Espinosa starts it off with a base hit. So Rubacaba will come up now. Alyssa also pitches for the team. She's 8-1 this season with an ERA of 1.51. Not starting today's game, though. That goes to Dallas Garcia. Alyssa will be in right field for the Mounties today. In the circle, Rihanna Carranza. 19 and nine for the season, ERA of 2.47. Averages about three and a half strikeouts per game. Hit the center field, easy little pickup, hard throw to first. What a sweet double play made right by there. Jocelyn Doan comes up and catches the line drives, doesn't hesitate, guns to first base for a eight to three double play. So you get a catch and then the throwback to get the runner for the double play. Mercedes Alba now up. Mercedes hitting 365 this season. Third base, first baseman for this stacked Mount Sac team. A little high and outside. That went high and away. Wind blowing out. We can see the ball sail out of Nancy Kelly Field. Has a tendency to do that on a day like today. Very warm today, so the ball should carry a little further. And Alba hits a deep one to left field, all the way back off the wall. Alba turns, heads for second with a stand up double. Well, no sooner do I say the ball carries, and that's exactly what it does as Alba takes it all the way to the wall. Escovel playing second base for Mount Sac. Is that the play? Off the plate for a stroke ball. Betting 309, a slugging percentage of 519. Go! 
Carranza can't seem to find the strike zone. As soon as Ed Ford puts his headsets on, the coach steps in front of him, blocks his vision. Nice little freezing pitch there by Rihanna. Slight, slight drink of water in the circle. Comes back with another one. Two and two, two outs. Strike three. So no runs, two hits, no errors, and one left on base. At the end of a half an inning to play, it's Mount Sac zero. Cerritos coming to bat here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ed, Albert, the old guy here on a warm day. Albert sort of, Albert, you look good. You don't look too hot in that black shirt. He said he's looking good. He's feeling good. He's got that little Tracy Thacker hand fan with him. See if that'll keep him cool. It helps. It helps. Of course, Ed Ford at the end of the table. Manning all the knobs and whistles here on sportsnetusa.net. As you were saying, Mark, uh, a big game for both schools. Um, Mount Sac uh, has certainly come on a lot. Uh, what their winning streak is, I believe it's 17 games. They didn't lose a game in all of March, and they have a uh, game that they were playing against Long Beach where they had a seven to five lead, so they just need to finish that one up on the 18th. Cerritos, on the other hand, has been playing well, but they need to do something here down the stretch if they want to get in and host, Mark. They, they obviously will make the playoffs, but if they want to host, they're gonna have to at least beat Long Beach and El Camino. The three teams they need to take two games, for, two of the three, Upcoming contest, today's Mount Sac game, El Camino, and Long Beach. They need to take two of those games, Mark. Yeah, they do. And, and I was talking to John Bang Gaston earlier, and like John said, does he believe they'll host a game in the playoffs? He said, Mark, I don't think so. I don't think we will. Dallas Garcia in the circle for Mount Sac. Well, Mark, I'm, I'm looking for maybe a little bit of that magic that uh, the Falcons pulled on the uh, Cerritos, uh, I mean, on uh, Cypress uh, College the last game we were here. Yeah, I mean, that was an exciting game to say the least. That's what I told John when we were watching it. Macias leading things off. for your Cerritos team. Jasmine Macias betting 4-11. Jasmine drops one in lazily for a base hit. So both teams getting hits to start off this game today. Lacerdo coming up, betting 360. 23 RBIs, great eye at the plate. She's walked 12 times, only struck out six so far this season. She offers a strike, not taken. Espinosa at third, White at first. Esquivel over at second. Griego at short. That's the infield. With Nubler behind the plate. That went low. Cody coaching at third, Bud over at first.
Runner going fouled out of play. De La Barcina in center. Rubacaba in right. And I believe Gabriel Flores is in left. Little one, can find no man's land, it does. Catch, throw to first. So it looked like they were gonna go back to back with double plays from the outfield. Cerritos did it the first time. Mount Zach had almost doubled up on that one, which I thought, hey, this is gonna be something. Back to back double plays from the outfield to first base. Runner goes, throw to second, not in time. So Macias gets her 33rd stolen base of the season. Ed, you know what? It's a young woman that can just, she's got the wheels to do anything once she gets on base. Manalo takes that one low. Marley playing shortstop for Cerritos. Great club, the sophomore has got a good year going 30 RBIs so far this season. Two big home runs and the ball flies out here at Nancy Kelly Field. Little toe tap on that one when the pitch came in from Garcia, Dallas Garcia. Averages almost seven strikeouts per seven innings. Ah! One's out of play. Garcia started eight games for Mount Sac, has won six, hasn't lost any, given up four home runs. Her ERA is 1.62. Down and away. And her whip is 1.09. So that's walks and hits combined divided by innings pitched. Gives you somebody's whip. Not like in my day, you just went to a store and bought a whip. Strike three called. Well, she averages seven. There's her first one. Landeros comes up. Nadia playing first base for Cody. Nadia batting 253. Seven RBIs this season. Down her way. Little ball as the as the hurricane picks up around here. High and away. Sack's got three that can come into the circle anytime they want them. To right field, see if Cody sends a runner. She does. Picked up. Cerritos is on the board first. Landeros goes to right. 
and gets an RBI. And with speed on the bases, Ed Ford, and Cody in the box, well, you know they're going to try and get that first run. Yeah, so important to set the, uh, the pace of the uh, game. Get out in front. Makes the other team work harder. Velasquez now comes up. Betting 333, 23 RBIs, one home run this season. Slugging percentage of 469 when you look at her numbers. Solid behind the plate. And that's one thing you always need when you've got a multiple person pitching staff or a single person pitching staff. You've got to have that person behind the plate that just knows personalities. Right at the knees, nice off-speed pitch by Garcia. Off the plate. So Cerrito strikes first here in the first inning. Couple base hits, gets a run in. A lot of speed, a lot of speed. Swing over the top. Great velocity. Ball four. Two on, Mark, and Falcons have a uh, two-out thing going. Another yeah, base hit here and uh, extend that lead. Yeah, and Ed, I, I tell you what, they're a very patient group of hitters. We've seen that this season, watching them against Cyprus. Carbajal comes to the plate. And if you can get to that starter, the big starter early, and kind of rattle them, we, we saw that in the first game of Palomar and Cypress. Yeah, we did. Palomar got to Reynolds early, and that's all they needed. Yeah, and then they played great defense and mm -hmm. held on tight. You know, and here I think it really helps, it really helps too, Ed, because of Carranza coming out there. She's got that lead going into the next inning, allows her to challenge. It's easier playing in front than it is from behind. Very true. And, of course, you have a third base coach over here at Cerritos that, you know what, she will set her runners free. Off the plate. Right now, Dallas just looks off the plate just a little. Espinosa gives her some words of encouragement from third base. Almost. The umpire started to raise that right arm and then looked like he was arthritic and stopped it about halfway up. I like the patience here at this at bat. Don't swing at something bad. Wait till you get a pitch you can you can hit somewhere. Two and zero. Oh. Three and oh it was. Ball four. So they're listening to Ed Ford today. Back to back walks. Bases are loaded. And we're gonna have a conversation quickly on the mound. 
Jim Bowler going out there to talk to the pitcher. And Ed, this is the one thing you just brought up though with, with Mount Sac, they do have the luxury of having three deep in the circle. Yeah, I mean, how many teams are in that situation? You look at the top team in RPI, which is Fullerton College right now, Cerritos, uh, right, I mean, Cypress right behind them. And the Hornets are blessed with having two top flight starters. You mentioned Mount Sac, three. Then there you've got your other teams, Cerritos, Cypress. It's, it's a one person uh, starting pitching staff. So White now leaves first base. White goes to right field for Mount Sac. They're gonna warm up their right fielder. And I'll get who's over at first base in a second. And if you're Mount Sac, even if you have won, you know, 17 games in a row, you don't want this game to get out of hand, so. They want to stop things right now. So Mercedes Alba is now over at first base. She was the designated player. And that was a good pitch, Mark. Took something off of it and froze the batter. Garcia comes back with a strikeout against Cardenas. But not before we get a run in. One run on two hits, three left on base. It's Cerritos one, Mount Sac zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And let's go back to the thing though because of, of the depth of Mount Sac. You often say this, that the pitcher's getting ready to come into the playoffs be it a Palomar, be it a Mount Sac, be it an OCC if they make the playoffs, be it a Fullerton College, being multiple person deep in the circle just gives them an advantage when they get ready to walk into the playoffs. Yeah, it, it certainly does. I mean, it would be you know, the equivalent of teams in Major League Baseball. They've got one competent starter and not a whole lot left after that. So you know that, hey, maybe your big starter is going to win the game. But then after that, eh, you're going to have some, some issues. So unless you have some somebody like Emily Rush where you really don't need a second starter, even though uh, Cypress did use Reynolds last year quite a bit. But you, you saw what happened in the, the Palomar game, the first game Palomar takes. Uh, Brad had to use. Uh, I'm trying to think of her name. The, the, we the we don't see her that often. Yeah. That's right. We don't see her that often. That's why. I think she had pitched a total of nine innings for the season. So here, I, I don't know if Cody's used another pitcher. Not for a long time. Nibbler goes deep to left field. Goodbye. She climbed on the bus and said, take me home. And that's exactly what she did on a hard hit line drive for a home run. Oh, that ties everything up. Morgan, that's her 34th ribby and her sixth home run of the season. Brings up Griego playing shortstop. Katie playing shortstop today, batting 431 for Mount Sac. Katie with 22 ribbies, one home run, one triple, eight doubles for her. Looks at that in the dirt. 
Rago slugging percentage, 611. Carranza needs to regain her pose here and get back to what she was doing in the other inning, first inning. Fouled away. One and two's the count. You know, don't let that uh, don't let that long home run rattle you. I really think what rattles pitchers more is when there are sudden lapses in the defense and nobody seems to be able to throw the ball to the right place. High fly ball to left field. Easy catch right there by Fontella. The lefty out in left field settles underneath it for out number one. Yeah, I agree with you, Ed. I think a lots of times when you're looking at people don't make plays, if you're pitching well. Brings up White, who's now in right field for Mount Sac. I mean, that's what happened to the Falcons last year in the state tournament, yeah. playing against Palmar. That was just that one sequence where their defense deserted them. Easy little scoop over at third. Nice play by there. As you just look at sweet hands by Natalie Basurto. She just makes a really, really good play at third base. And now she's gotten two quick outs, Mark. And both were easy, easy plays. Brings up Flores. So Gabrielle Flores in left field for Mount Sac. Looks at that one. Flores batting 288 this season. It's a string out to left field for a base hit. Two hits in the inning for Mount Sac. Yeah, four so far in the game. De La Barcina playing center field. Rihanna, the lefty, is at the plate. Slaps it off. And if you watch that first swing, she's batting 302. She will remind you, Ed, of a traditional slap hitter. You go back in the days of softball. We'll get to some scores for you, and there's some big games going on that uh, have some seating impact implications. Granza brings it, a lot of speed, hit over in our direction. You know, that actually made the sound of a 145 student when it hit the sidewalk, that sort of hollow empty sound. Yeah. I thought maybe one had walked in behind us to watch. Uh, it sort of scared me for a second. One and two's the count. Shot. Third base person. That's right. Hot corner says, I got it all the way, and that ends the inning. One run on two hits, one left on base. As we head to bottom of two, it's Cerritos one, Mount Sac one, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And Mark, let's go over a few scores for everyone. In the OEC, Golden West leading Saddleback by a score of two to nothing. That's in the top of the seventh. And we were talking about it. These other teams, if they have, a, have any chance when they play against Golden West, they've got to win and they're not doing it. So it looks like the uh, Rustlers will get that uh, fourth place spot. And you know, Mark, Maybe Brad Pickler's going to have to settle for third place. 
right now. Bottom of the fourth inning. Orange Coast two, Cypress two. Wow. That's in the fourth. No score with Ventura and Cuesta. That's a big game. Citrus ahead of Bakersfield. Antelope Valley looks like they're going to run rule uh, L.A. Valley. L.A. Pierce leading Santa Barbara. Not good for Santa Barbara's chances of getting in as a uh, play-in team. Bottom of the second inning, Santiago Canyon one, Fullerton College nothing. And the other teams in the OEC need, need Fullerton to stumble. And, you know, let's see if they're up to the task. Yeah, and really, when you think of Cypress, they just they have to sweep everybody. Oh yeah, they've got to sweep everybody, and then pray for some help. Yeah, Fontella comes up playing left field for your Cerritos Falcons, and we'll get some uh, some South Coast Conference scores for you here in a second. Drop ball, just a little low. So Dallas Garcia looked like mm, maybe today wasn't her day, but she settled down. Up the middle for a base hit. Fontella says, Mr. Pavlovich, we're just gonna keep hitting the ball. And that's what they need to do. Bottom of the second inning, El Camino leading East Los Angeles by a score of three to nothing. Compton and Long Beach playing today. That game starts, that game is underway. No score that's reported to us. And that's about it. Uh, some Northern California scores that uh, may have some influence. Jocelyn Doan coming up now. Again, another excellent outfielder, especially center field. Cody gets some really fantastic defensive center fielders in the game, and they can play offense too. Quick first steps, great gloves, smart ball players. Doan's got everybody on top of her. Looks like she's going to drop the bunt. She doesn't. Alba. Crashing from first, Espinosa coming in from third. Doan pops it straight up, easy play. So Doan pops it up for out number one. In that uh, Central Valley Conference, always a wild shootout between the teams. Last year, Reedley wasn't part of that, but it looks like the Tigers are back. They shut out Sequoias by a score of one to nothing. Sequoias was in second place. Fresno leading that conference. Everybody put themselves in position. And Fresno City, well, not sure if they're leading the conference anymore. Merced shuts them out, pulls the upset four to nothing. Merced over Fresno City, and they're gonna play another game in that doubleheader. Another pop-up. Alba goes to all the way to the dugout, makes the catch for out number two. And Kasumnis River Three to nothing over Folsom, and that's in the uh, top of the third inning. West Valley beating Chabot, four to nothing. That's in the second inning. Two down, runner at first, runner goes. Throw there, stolen base. So Cody's got everybody running so far in today. Puts a runner in scoring position. That is Doan's 13th stolen base of the season. Well, you got to mount, you got to match Mount Sack, you know. You can't just sit back and uh, let things happen. And Cody's just, uh, you know, hey, we're, we're going all out here. We're running, we're hitting. Fouled away, off the top of Albert's car. 
I missed our one camera by about 15 feet. That one's sort of expendable. Oh, okay. Sort of. One and one count. Garcia takes it. It's Alba. Easy line drive for out number three. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to the top of the third, well, we're all knotted up at one. It's Cerritos one, Mount Sac one, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ed, you talked about everybody. It's, it's, it's positioning time. Yeah, it's positioning time. In the South Coast Conference, the leading team is Mount Sac, followed by Long Beach, followed by El Camino, followed by Cerritos. Cerritos, and then Compton is in fifth place. And Compton has 20 wins, Mark. Yeah. I don't think they've gotten 20 wins in the yeah. last couple of seasons. Easily. I mean, yeah. So last year, I, I don't even think they won a game last year yeah, if, they, I, if they played. If they played. I'm not I, sure I they don't, played They last didn't play year. last year, yeah. but the, the season before that, I think they played, but they may have not won any games. Yeah. Or they won one game. So huge turnaround for that program, and it would be great to see them make the uh, regionals. Yeah, I, I think it would be fun, and it's interesting. Now, I did talk to Cody. Cody said first and second. We've talked about this. First and second from East Conference will make the playoffs. Then it goes to RPI. And isn't there a, didn't she tell you about a, a sub 500 clause? She did. She said RPI, if you're a team that should make it RPI, but you're under 500, you will not meet in the playoffs. Taken right there by Marley Manalo for out number one. And that in itself is going to uh, eliminate some teams that have high RPIs, but really haven't played very uh, good softball so far. Yeah, and, and the thing that you would hear from a few of us that besides Ed and myself, uh, of Corey Nalen were here today, uh, because Ed has always talked about teams that are under 500 making the playoffs and uh, you know so is Corey and myself it's sort of inappropriate yeah if you look in the no in northern California all the teams that are high in RPI are uh, over 500 but there are two that stand out that aren't Sierra is 10 and 7 in conference Rubacaba Takes that up the middle for a base hit. But then uh, they're 14 and 17 overall. They'll probably make 500. But Monterey Peninsula, 1 and 8 in conference, 10 and 20 overall. They almost have no shot at getting to 500. And really, uh, you know, you, personally, I don't like to see, you know, they would get some sort of spot. Folsom Lake got in last year. Uh, with a sub-500 record. Right now, they're at 13 and 19, but they're 19th in RBI, RPI. And remember, in the North, it's the top 16 teams. They do not have any sort of play in. So Santa Rosa is 16, but they're under 500. So we'll see how that goes. Alba hits a slow grounder over to second for one, back to first, safe. Albert calls it safe, so we don't even need a replay. So, so Manalo gets a slow grounder, flips it to Cardenas, can't get it to Landeros in time, but they do get the lead runner. And plus in the north, Siskius is going to, and they're going to win that conference, uh, that sort of uh, combined conference, so they have to have a position for them. So realistically, Santa Rosa and Monterey Peninsula aren't going to be in the playoffs. In Southern California, let's see what the situation might be there. Esquivel comes up for Mount Sac. Amanda playing second base today. Struck out her first time. Nine doubles, one triple, two home runs. 
She's, she can scorch the ball. And with the wind blowing the way it is, well, fouls it off. There's no Albert Robles vortex here at Nancy Kelly Field. Not like at Cypress Baseball. I'm not sure that's really a vortex. I think sometimes uh, we need to not make pitching changes. <laughs> So it's now getting changed to the Albert Robles move. No, I think I think Albert pitcher? wouldn't be bringing in new pitchers. <laughs> he he would stick with the the guy he brought in that was getting people out. Till he uh, actually looked like he was getting tired and was three and two hit down the line. They're wheeling the runner. They're going to stop Alba at third. I thought maybe for a second they would send her home on a long single. Runners at the corner. Yep, you can see the runners at the corner. As someone would say, Albert Robles on the visuals. At least the ones that look good, the bad ones are me. Deep fly ball, left field to the wall. Fontella yanks it off the blue that says softball for Cerritos. It was close, but no, as Mount Sac thought they had taken the lead. No runs on two hits, no errors, and two left on base. As we head to the bottom of three, well, we're sitting here knotted up at one. It's Mount Sac one, Cerritos one. You're on Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, almost back-to-back -back home runs for the young lady that catches for Mount Sac. Just a little less than Albert. She'd have hit another one today over in left field. That was a question. Now, now it's sprung to my mind. We had some community college baseball games yesterday, some community college softball games, a few, because Monday's not ever really a big day. But does anybody know of any college softball or baseball games here in the U.S. that got canceled because of the eclipse? Uh, there was a major league baseball game that was pushed back four and a half hours okay. for the eclipse. So, yeah, well, they just figured so many people wanted to see it and that they would come late to the game, so they pushed the game back. Hmm, I wonder why they just didn't have a promotion where everybody that uh, comes to the game gets the little... Uh, free glasses? Free glasses. Probably, probably there's liability issues there, so they didn't want to do that. Kind of like, remember when they used to have... Uh, give out the uh, angel bats. Oh yeah. At one time, and then I got cracked across the shin by a little kid when I went to. Yeah, one of that's those. why uh, that kind of stuff you gotta not kind of do anymore. Lollipop shot to second base. Amanda says, "Okay, Mark, I'll make it as easy as it is." As Manalo just hits a, a little ball with a snow cone sort of effect for out number one. Landeros comes up. Had that big RBI in the first inning to tie this game up. Yeah, the kid thought my kneecap was a high fastball and tried to go to right field with it. I went down and painted, and all my friends sat there and laughed at me. They thought it was the funniest thing they'd ever seen. Madero's takes a stride. Two and one's the count. Having a good season.
Drops it into right field. That's what she did last time. She was up for a base hit. Both hits. The right field. Four hits now for Cerritos. Brings up Velasquez. Catcher with a wide stance. Looks at a ball. Last time up, she walked. Twenty-three RBIs, seven walks, fifteen strikeouts. Now she's got eighteen walks. Count evens out at one and one. Everybody around 81 to 90 at bats for Cody's team. Down in the dirt. Naughty over at first base only has two stolen bases. Mount Sack playing at normal depth in the infield. On the corner, Espinosa third, Griego over at short, Escabel over at second, Alba at first. Ellis Garcia in the circle, A little pop foul. You know, Mark, there's so many rivalries here in the South Coast Conference. Uh, I think one of the most intense one, at least from the Falcon standpoint, has to be against Long Beach. I was going to say, uh, you know, we've been here for a few. Yeah, days. we've been here for a few. Cody against Megan, so those are always interesting. Back up on the hop, over to second for one. Back to first, not in time. So when you back up, like Espinosa had to do to wait for the hop, that slows you down on trying to make the turn. Got it over to second, but not with much on it, so it's a fielder's choice. But I think there's a, a, a fairly intense rivalry between these two teams today. Oh, I do too. Because uh, last time we were out here, last year, we had a very tight game between these two teams. I think the final score was three to two. Yeah. Carbajal comes up. Walked her last time up. And here's the thing that's real interesting. Ed, tell me how wrong I am on this because I don't think record means that much. I think the quality of these teams when they play each other is just a smidgen for one team and then maybe a smidgen for the other team in this conference. Yeah, these two teams really play each other tough. I mean, earlier this year, yeah, Cerritos uh, lost to to Mount Sac, uh, I believe the score is seven to nothing. But normally, they're you know, they're competitive, tight, one and two run games. High and away. I mean, here we are in the bottom of the third inning, and we've got a one-one tie. Yeah. Yeah, I really do. When you look at this conference, it's very much like that, that you can just say, you know, hey, they're 14 and 0, they're 7 and 7. It doesn't really matter when they play each other. Fouled away. 3 and 2. Runner will get a head start over at first base. The top four competitive teams in this South Coast Conference, Mount Sac and El Camino Long Beach and Cerritos, they just battle each other and they also know how to beat the teams that are below them. You don't want one of those teams coming up and surprising you. 3-2, drive in the gap, all the way to the wall. Cody said, just keep running, don't stop. The throw to second, not in time. 
Cerritos takes a two to one lead. I don't know, Ed. I think I think Cody ought to bring you back for every game. Every time you say that they they play competitive, they score a run. Well, we were out here a bunch of times last year, and they got into the state championship. Yeah, and, they uh, did. You know, the year before, we were out here quite a few times, also. It was funny, I was talking to somebody before the game and I said, yeah, I, much to the chagrin of uh, Brad Pickler, I picked Cody's team to win the World Series. This person looked at me and goes, why? I said, there was just something about them last year that I thought they had the possibility of winning. So now, Rubacaba will go into the circle White, I think, is going to go back to first base. Alba is heading to the dugout, so I'll see who ends up in right field. That's been my rotating door right now. Well, that Golden West Saddleback game is a final. Golden West wins by a score of two to nothing. Bottom of the fifth inning, Cypress now leading Orange Coast College by a score of six to two. A game that uh, if they want to get in, they should be winning, especially against a team that doesn't have the best record. Glendale is losing to Pasadena City College. That's in the bottom of the fifth. The Lancers have a five to three lead over Glendale. Glendale's had quite a year, but uh, they can't let it slip away. And Cuesta is already behind Ventura by a score of three to nothing. Cuesta's got to get it in gear if they want to finish in second place and get a playoff spot. But it looks like Ventura doesn't want them to do that. Looks like Moore Park has that conference wrapped up. They're leading uh, Allen Hancock eight to five. That's the top of the fifth inning. So it looks like Mia Martin is now in right field. For Mount Sack. White goes back to first base. Bottom of the third inning, Santiago Canyon three, Fullerton College nothing, and that game is at FC. El Camino ahead of Elac by score six to nothing. Hardness drives to the left. Easy little catch right there for Flores, but not before they take the lead. One run on two hits, no errors, one left on base. As we head to the top of four, it's Cerritos two, Mount Sac one, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Yeah, and uh, going back to our RPI thing, we never really finished the Southern California situation. So it's, uh, Top 14 teams and then uh, 15, 16, 17, and 18 in the play-ins. And so far, we really don't have any teams that are the only sub-500 team that is inside the top 18. Well, there's two of them, Saddleback and Antelope Valley. But uh, they would get bumped out anyway because you have to let Mount San Jacinto and Chafee in because they would be the number one and two teams from the Inland Empire Athletic Conf yeah. Conference. Okay. Uh, Chafee is one game under 500. They're 15 and 16, but they have been playing much better as of late. And Mount San Jacinto is 17 and 11. So then what you're saying is the South is pretty well... Yeah, the, the only questions would be, uh, does somebody like Glendale get a spot? Of course, they're losing right now. And if you, you, know, you, you can't go in there and lose to teams that you really need to beat. Katie Gregg will start things off for Mount Sack. Off her bat, just taken out of the air on a sun field. Jasmine Macias makes a nice catch battling the sun in right field for out number one. 
So if we switch the OEC, as Mark said, Cypress pretty much has to win the rest of their games. They certainly need to sweep OCC, because if they don't, I I'm not sure Brad would know what third place is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when has he ever finished in third place in the conference? Uh, not since we've been around. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could say second place one of those years yeah, with that, that, that play in, uh, not the, yeah. the, 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 when they had the, the uh, OEC oh. tournament thing. Oh, yeah, on that one. Silly. Yeah. But other than that, I don't think they've ever come in third. White comes up from out sack. She's back in right field now. So White's moved from right to first to first to right in this game. Off her hands, again, easy fly ball, except for the Sun, Jasmine Macias handles those two perfectly. A couple pitches, a couple outs here on sportsnetusa.net. And Mark, as we've witnessed numerous years, Cody's team have a habit of April, that's when they play their best. I mean, if they need to win X amount of games. They win them. They win them, it's that simple, they don't fold down the stretch. And we've seen so many other teams that were hot for the first two months of the season, but then down the stretch, the pressure gets on them and they collapse, yeah. but not this team. Ronza having a good time in the circle. And I think, you know, it, you've got sort of the same situation with, with Mount Sac. I mean, not that they were gonna collapse, but you know, Cypress takes two from them early in the season and then Mount Sac now, that's not the way we really play. This is the way we really play. Yeah. They turn the switch. Three shots to right field. The throw to first. Not in time, but you've got to love the fact that Jasmine Macias has said, watch this, let me get all three. Feisty little right fielder for your Cerritos Falcons. Look at the infield for you. But with two outs, your possibilities are a little more limited. Right on the corner there. Pretty pitch by Rihanna. Go, well, Mark. I think, uh, you know, a nice drag bunt. Yeah, that would work. Something. First, First base baseman, is back deep. Yeah, back deep. Got the speed to get there, and your left-handed batter. Slaps it foul. One and two's the count. I mean, who's going to field that ball? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I agree with you, Ed. And as you always say, hey, you put that pressure on the defense, somebody might pick the ball up, whirl and throw, and it goes into the outfield and you get You're an tied. extra base. Yeah. Or, yeah, or come around the score and it's all tied up. One and two. Hits down in our direction. Nice little soccer save. Yeah, yeah, let's not make sure it's too close in our direction. I, I guess the screen might protect me. <laughs> Albert doesn't think so, so, uh, okay, well, I'll run then. Landeros deep at first. Just gets a piece of it on that one again. Like Ed said, Landeros is playing about four feet behind first base for Cerritos. And if you could drag it, even with two strikes, uh, put it just close to the circle, uh, you may have a good chance of having a base hit. Hit down in our direction one more time. De La Barcina. The center fielder for this Mount Sac team. Everybody shifts towards left field. She keeps slapping at that direction. High pitch. 
Well, if you can take it up the middle, Jocelyn Doan is saying, hit it to the 1978 sign. Your runner will score. And with your speed, you'll be standing on third. And, uh, Fatello tries to catch it off the ground. She was in shallow in left. It was a dying quail. She went down for it. But what's nice is she knocks it down so nobody goes any further than one base. Another hit. That's eight hits now in this game. Definitely you don't want, you, know, you want to give it a try, but you don't want that ball getting by you because if it did. Espinoza is up. So Carranza in just a little bit of uh, a little bit of trouble here. Two on. Runner in scoring position. Needs to uh, get out of this with a Espinoza. good pitch. Sorry, Ed. Espinosa. Fontella says, I've got it. Doan comes in and takes control and pulls it down as the center fielder cuts the left fielder off for out number three. No runs on two hits. No errors and two left on base. As we head to bottom of four, well, it's a nail biter. It's Cerritos two, Mount Sac one here on Sportsnet, USA.net. You know, Ed, it's, it's real interesting. We've been talking this whole time about teams that should get there, couldn't get there. You've seen a few of the softball teams this year, a uh, few in the OEC and everything else. I think this last weekend when we saw Cyprus, we saw a team that everybody thought was going to win it last year. I don't know. I, I think Palomar got better compared well, to last year. They certainly didn't get any worse. And, you know, the thing is they have more than one starter, so that's going to be uh, a, a big factor. Right now, bottom of the sixth inning, Cyprus leads OCC by a score of 6-3. to three. Pasadena pouring it on, 9-3 over Glendale. That's a game at Pasadena City College. Citrus beating Bakersfield, and that's an important one in the Western State Athletic Conference. Uh, I think that's the South or the East or something like that. Never could figure that one out. Well, looks like Cuesta finally woke up and realized, hey, we got we to gotta beat some people or we're going to be sitting at home like we did last year. We... We can't fold down the uh, stretch uh, uh, as we did last year. Quest to nine, Ventura three. That's the top of the fourth inning. Antelope Valley, LA Valley, that game's over. It's a run rule game, 12 to nothing. Moore Park still ahead of Allen Hancock, eight to five. LA Pierce now trailing Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is in the same position as Cuesta. They've got to win games, and you've got to beat those teams that are below you in the standings. 6 to 2, Santa Barbara. Chabot and West Valley. West Valley on the way to a run roll game, 8 to nothing in the third. Canyons ahead of uh, LA Mission, sort of a surprise there, 1 to nothing. Santiago still leading Fullerton, 3 to nothing. That's the top of the fourth at Fullerton. Cosumnes River, 7, Folsom Lake, 0. That's the bottom of the fourth. Montella takes that high and away. One to one's the count. In the SCC, El Camino 7, East Los Angeles 1. That's the end of four innings. Reedley is uh, trailing Sequoia's 1 to nothing in the second game of their doubleheader. And Merced is ahead of Fresno City 1 to nothing in the second game of their doubleheader. That's the top of the fourth inning. So that's the scoreboard. Long Beach against Compton. We have no information on that. Montella looking at two and one count. The left fielder fouls it off just down the line. Well, we know they're playing each other, but that's about it. Good little left fielder. Cody just gets so many good outfielders. And this young lady is another one in a long string of excellent outfielders. Hits it down. Quick pickup, throw to first. Easy little play by Janice Espinosa over at third base for Mount Sac. Watches the ball in the glove. 
comes up, sets her feet, flips it to first for out number one. We go back to the top of the order for Miss Macias. Jasmine. Oops. Jocelyn Doan, I always forget about her. I've got her down here. Last time she was up, she popped out to the catcher. So Jocelyn Doan is up. Don't forget the center fielder who has the speed out there to make all the plays. So Jocelyn, a little apology. Yeah, I think she, she was coming after me on that yeah, one, wasn't she? she was trying to hit a little higher. Now, am I right, but don't Cerritos and Cypress Stone both have Doan as the leadoff hitter? Yeah, uh, Doan is the second base person for Cyprus, and Doan is the center fielder for Cerritos. Doan for Cyprus is number 77, and she's a left-handed hitter. Corey does believe she is a true 1D1 softball candidate. One, one of the other voices here on sportsnetusa.net. And she's only a freshman. Correct, Mark? For uh, Cyprus? Yeah, Doan's a freshman, correct? Uh, I think so. I know she wasn't on the team last year. Jocelyn here for Cerritos is a sophomore. Yeah, she she played last year. Yeah. Here and there, mostly a defensive replacement in left field. But Cody's moved her into the starting lineup and uh, for this season, and she's playing center, and she has also played second base too. Yeah. Takes that down. Three and two's the count. Two to one. Here in the bottom of four, the wind is picking up here at Nancy Kelly Field. Yes, it is. Drops in for a base hit. Throw over to first, not in time. So Doan gets a single. Yeah, they, they, they weren't gonna get her. She went down the line way too fast. Six hits now for your Cerritos Falcons. So for the Falcons, they need to get this runner to second base with one out, and then that will open up all sorts of possibilities. Macias comes up, takes the first one for a strike. Was on in the first, stole second immediately when she got there. Popped up to first base her last time up. Jasmine batting 4-11. Fouled it away. Slugging percentage of 567, and when you look at her, she's got 16 RBIs. She very rarely strikes out. Excellent eye at the plate. Stays alive with that one. 18 walks, only four strikeouts at 90 plus at bats. Well, she certainly needs in this situation not to strike out. Garcia Dallas rocks, brings it off the plate. Throw to second, they get her. Beautiful throw, a better tag, and they get the runner right there on a beautiful tag at second base as the runner tried to slide away from it, and the sweep tag gets the runner there. Bases are empty now.
Yeah, maybe on that slide, Mark, more towards the inside of the bag would have worked because the outside was guessed that that's where you're going and that's where we're that, going to put that's down the glove and the ball. It. Yep. You're right in our direction. Two and two's the count. Two outs. Two to one is the score on an exciting community college softball game here on sportsnetusa.net. Top programs gnawing at each other. 2-2, two, two. staying alive. Yeah, quite an at-bat by her, Mark. Talk about her not striking out much. She's just fouling them off and just hanging in there. This will be her 93rd at-bat this season. So she works the count from 0 and 2, Mark. Now it's full. Three, two. Takes it up the middle, base hit. She smokes it for a strong line drive. Second hit of the inning. Well, last time up, Ed, Macias didn't stay at first base long. She took off running. We'll see if she does it again. Dallas Garcia, who usually averages about seven strikeouts per game, not getting them today. And let's see if The Falcons can come up with, uh, you know, kind of make up for that uh, caught stealing here. Off the plate, two and zero. Oh. Cody's moved out of the coach's box in the short left field. They need to make the boxes bigger, Albert. Runner goes. Throw, another stolen base. Well, if they need to make the boxes bigger, Mark, then where do you put the one that uh, Brad Pickler stands in? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere out the at the warning track or something? I was going to say on another piece of property. That that one catch that uh, the Palomar uh, left fielder made, I mean. He was standing next to her. Yeah, he was standing next to her. He blocked the camera shot. Runner in scoring position, two outs. Here in the bottom of the fourth, up by one. Third base person for Cody said, hey, I'm trying to get time out. They looked at Natalie and said, no, no, no. So she steps out. Two and one's the count. Over, dropped, flipped, just in time. So Esquivel stays with it at second base for Mount Sack to get the out. No runs on two hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to top of five, where we're moving right along, it's Cerritos 2, Mount Sac 1, here on SportsnetUSA.net. Ed, Albert, and the old guy facing the elements today here on SportsnetUSA.net. Okay, let's uh, update some scores for you. Top of the fourth inning, Riverside five, Santa Ana two. In the bottom of the fourth, the Hornets have come back. It's now Santiago Canyon three, Fullerton College two. West Valley ahead nine nothing over Chabot. Santa Barbara six to two over L.A. Pierce. 
Alan Hancock and Moore Park. It's eight to five Moore Park. Moore Park in first place in that conference. Bakersfield lost to Citrus by a score of seven to two. So that helps Citrus move up. Cuesta steamrolls Ventura, a game they needed to win to stay in second place. They beat Ventura by a score of 11 to three. Cypress now eight to three over Orange Coast. That's headed into the top of the seventh inning. And then uh, Golden West beats Saddleback. Reedley over Sequoias, but in the second game of that doubleheader, Sequoias is leading Reedley. That's in the bottom of the fourth. And Modesto, not Modesto, Merced looking to sweep Fresno City, but uh, Fresno's tied it all up at one. Well, Alyssa Rubalcava gets up, and on the first pitch, she takes a shot in the back, so she's over at first base after being hit. That brings up Alba. Mercedes Alba. 31 ribbies. Six home runs. Now we're going to get a runner. And the runner is going to be Sophia Burma. Albert looks at the first one for a strike. So we'll see if Mount Sack plays a little run and hit softball. Off the end, that's gonna die for a base hit. Runner at first and second. Just off the end of the bat, enough to get it to the outfield, but not to the outfielder. Hit batter, a little dunker, and Mount Sack is in a great position here. Nobody out, two on. So Esquivel will be coming up. Cody decides to take a walk to the circle, have a little discussion on this. And then that's the situation, Mark. Fifth inning, been a tight game. You're down by one run. You got the first two runners on. There's nobody out. You sacrifice, get that runner to third base. Well, I would, and I mean that. So then the, you can tie it up. Yeah, I mean, Amanda herself is betting 309. The next batter coming up. She's got 19 ribbies. She doesn't really strike out yet. She's walked eight times. She struck out eight times. So, you know, I think she can put the ball in play. So I'm going to go with the, the uh, traditional softball move and uh, drop down a bunt. If they get me at first, they get me at first. I really don't care. Yeah, because your runners are going to be at uh, second and third. So we'll see how uh, the Mounties play this one. Certainly, uh, it's you know, advantage Mount Sack. Mia Martin now running for Alba. So they've got a pinch runner for Alba. Two pinch runners are out there. As Alba hits it off the end of the bat, it drops. So they bring in a pinch runner for her. That's gonna be Martin that brings up Esquivel squares, tries to drop it. It's a foul ball. Okay, and nice play by Velasquez because the ball hit. As soon as it went foul, she grabbed it. Didn't allow it to jump back into fair territory. So do you, do you still go with the bunt, Mark? I do. 0-2 count. 
I have her just turn her body, put the bat on the ball. She doesn't offer. Fairly far outside for, on, for Carranza on that last pitch. Needs to get it in just a little tighter to get her to commit to uh, bunting or not. One and two count. Two on, no outs. To the fence, caught right there. What a play, high foul ball going to the fence. Velasquez doesn't let the screen bother and pulls it in for out number one. Good defensive play by your Falcons. Well, the lady that's gone yard and almost went yard again. We'll call her the gardener, she goes so many yards. Take that for a strike. Give her a buck, she'll mow your outfield. One down, two to one. Runners at first and second. In the dirt. Nice pick up behind the plate. Rihanna just says, thank you for being back there. She bounced that one in. One and one's the count. Down and away. Ed, you watch the way she's pitching this young woman. She knows she's already hit one out. She almost hit another one out. I don't think she's going to give her anything. We could have bases loaded real quick. Yeah, but you, you do want to be careful with bases loaded too. Two and one count. Up the middle. Down, stop that first one, get the runner at first. Sweet play by Cardenas over at second. She makes the stop, she gets the lead runner for out number two and holds the runners from scoring. So the defense for Cerritos stepping up here in the top of the fifth. Tying run at third, go ahead run at second with two outs. Down and away. Cardenas makes the play. Velasquez makes a play. Carranza down the middle. Says thank you defense. Hit batter. Then a walk. Cross there, defense picks it up, and that's out number three. No runs on no hits. One player left on base. As we head for the bottom of the fifth, it's Cerritos two, Mount Sac one here on Sportsnet USA.net. Should go back and say one hit last inning. Alba got a base hit. I need to give that hit to her. So Ed, the defense for Cerritos comes up huge. Yeah. In the fifth inning. That was a a big stand for them. So we're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Cerritos still leading by a score of two to one. Bottom of the fourth, we still have the score as Santiago three, Fullerton two. Sumnus River over Folsom Lake, that's in the top of the six, seven to nothing. Canyons in LA Mission tied up in the bottom of the seventh inning, two apiece. That game's at Canyon, so see if Canyons can pull the upset. Allen Hancock, top of the seventh over under, I should say, Moore Park is winning that game by a score of eight to five. Let's see if we can find that Cypress score. Top of the seventh inning, Cypress leading eight to three. Quest to beat Ventura. So congratulations to Janelle there on that win. And let's see what's happening with uh, El Camino's game. 
El Camino 7-1 over Elac. That's in the bottom of the sixth inning, and that is at Elac. No score for Compton and Long Beach at this point in time. So Rubicaba in the circle. You look at her numbers. Well, she averages five strikeouts for seven innings. The RA of 2.57, a whip of 1.51. She is eight and one for the season. Manalo will start it off. Marley, gritty little shortstop goes to right field. Out number one, taken out there by Mark, who was inserted to play right field. So Landeros comes up. Nadia plays first base, takes that for a strike. Two to one, one run, nine hits, no errors for Mount Sac. Two runs, seven hits, no errors for Cerritos. And that's the difference in this game, those zeros at the very end. High fastball, never saw it coming. Swung right through it. The defense for both these teams has been what you expect it to be. Superb. Just off the edge. Looking for a little haircut on that one. Bends her back. Espinoza at third. Griego at short. Esquivel at second. White over at first. The infield for Mount Sac. Fly ball into the gap. Over to the wall. So a stand-up double for Landeros. So the catcher of Velasquez comes up. Got on last inning with a fielder's choice. Walked her first time up. One out. Slow roller to short. Quick throw to first. Picked out there to get the runner. Nice by Katie Griego. Goes down. Is going towards first when she makes the throw. Puts it on the money. So again, defense stands up for both these teams. Carbajal comes up. Singled with an RBI last time. Walked her first time up. She's one for one today. Celeste batting 297. 14 ribbies for your Falcons. She does the old double clutch dance step, Albert, at home plate. High and tight. Two one, two out. Slow roller back to the circle. Throw it away. 
on a lazy throw from the circle by Rubalcaba. Ed Ford, that's just what you can't do. And we're going to get timeout as we get an E1 and the runner scores. Well, Ed, I talked about what good defense was going on. Comebacker to the circle, and then a lollipop. Oh, it's not hard to throw to first base. And everybody will tell you, don't ever just pick up the ball and try to ease it to somebody. Make your plays always the same. And you know what? Cody says, thank you very much. We'll take that one. Yeah, you do need to capitalize on any miscues when these two teams meet up. So no matter what, that run is unearned. Because that would have been the third out in the inning. Well, if they're going to give you a gift, might as well just start a, a, a two-out rally here and yeah, exactly. put up another run. But Cody's dad over at first base, Cody's brother in the dugout, Cody here at third. It's a family affair. Here at Cerritos College today at Nancy Kelly Field. One and two. High and away. The only thing flying out here is softballs. The wind's blowing, the birds are saying, we're staying on the ground. Fly ball, center field. Right there to just settle that one, De La Barcina. So she brings it in for out number three, but not before another run comes in. One run on one hit, one air and one left on base. As we head to the top of the six, it's Cerritos three, Mount Sac one, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ed, I find it real interesting that, you know, the score that I keep thinking about, that you keep telling us about, is that Fullerton College score, because if it holds up, huge win for Cypress College, with Fullerton losing, because that is a team you would expect to beat Fullerton College, and that would be a gift to Brad, who gets him within two. And, I, and I, absolutely correct. And and what was going on with Orange Coast today? Were they winning? No, Orange Coast was playing Cypress. Oh, they're playing Cypress. That's right. They're losing, right? They have officially lost eight runs, nine hits, and three errors for Cypress. Uh, the defense is still wow. a little shaky here and there. Yeah. Orange Coast three runs, seven hits, and two errors. We know who the winning pitcher would be for Cypress, but had to been the uh, person always starting. Yep. Caitlin Reynolds. Exactly. Other finals that have playoff implication or regional seeding implications. Citrus beats Bakersfield 7-2. Cuesta beats Ventura 11-3. Allen Hancock losing to Moore Park 8-5. That is in the top of the seventh. That game's probably over. Top of the sixth, Santa Barbara responds and comes back and has, puts up 14 runs to... Uh, L.A. Pierce is two, so that'll be a run roll game. 
Missions and Canyons all tied up at two in the bottom of the seventh inning. White comes to the plate. Takes a strike, swings at a strike, going two is the count. Trailing by two, we're in the sixth. Catcher had a little bite taken out of her on that one. So okay. Cypress wins, is Fullerton still winning or losing it? Fullerton is still losing by one run, three to two to Santiago Canyon. And El Camino beat Elac seven to one. So that figure is all in this South Coast Conference race. And really, when you're in that in that race, Ed, I mean, you're chasing two teams if you're El Camino. Yes, you're you're chasing Long Beach, you're chasing Mount Sac, and you're trying to let Cerritos not catch you. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, and really Compton's right in there too. So, well, it's 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 a battle. Though in head to head, um, I'm. I know that Long Beach has the edge over Compton. Mount Sac did lose to Compton there early in the year by a score of one to nothing, but uh, they handled the Tartars easily the next time out. Off the knee, picks it up in time, safe. Over at first base. So White gets on on what I would say is a misplayed ball by Cardenas and John Van Gasten seems to agree with me over there in the booth. I think it's because John knows me and John said, oh, that nasty old man over there is going to call it an error. And he wasn't talking about Ed, so, you know, we know who that is. Could blame it on Corey Nalen. Also, you were pressing that button that said, <laughs> E1, E1, E1. I was giving him the sign. Giving him the sign. Deep fly ball down. It is foul. Oh, the ride was on. Flores just said, here, let me let me hit it a ton. Twenty-two home runs. She says, Well, let me do it again. This time, too much air right into the sunshine, and Jasmine Macias pulls it in easily. Only one down for the Mounties, though. They've got a runner on. You, know, you can't keep letting them get runners on because something will break. Well, it almost one of did. These innings. Yeah, last inning, uh, it could have happened. And also this inning, if that shot wouldn't have been pulled so much. You love Barcina. The little slap hitter. Certainly, you'd rather get uh, ground ball out here, but you take anything you can get. Infield, in, outfield, in. She tries to drop a bunt, which is foul. So Fontella in, in left. Doan in at center. Macias in at right. The corners squeezing the infield. Manalo and Cardenas. Even now Cardenas swings over closer to first base. Slap shot, foul ball. One and two. Well, Mark, once again, they're playing her where you know, they must know from scouting that she can't hit one right at the 1978 state championship uh, banner. Yeah, and Ed, if she can, whoa. And Ed, on both her bunts, she's not tried to pull a bunt with her being a speedy left-hander come out of the box. Slaps it up the middle. On the bag for one, over to first, not in time.
Yeah, keep uh, erasing that lead runner. That's a good sign. But now the Mounties have some speed at first base, but two outs. As we're here in the top of the sixth inning. And we go to the top of the order. Speaking of being at the top of the sixth, so we go back up to Espinoza. Down in the dirt, Espinoza. 438 coming into the game. She's 0 for 2 today. Well, she got a base hit in the first, I'm sorry. Forced out on a fielder's choice. Then popped out, so she's 1 for 2 today. Runner goes. Wow. Ball gets away from. Gonna have to, I would say that's a wild pitch. Yeah. Carranza needs to settle down here. Don't let, uh, don't undo your own work by uh, some defensive or pitching lapses here. You got two outs. You know, her defense has shown that they can make the plays. You're not facing somebody that can hit the building, so let your defense get this final out. You don't need to throw overthrow it and get a strikeout. It's not necessary. Well, and, and here's going to be the interesting play. If it's a single to the outfield, you got a speed burner on second. As an outfielder, he's not in the air. But where would you go, Albert Robles? If you were the outfielder, the ball's just hit an easy single and you got a speed burner on second, you know she's going to turn and head for home. Two outs. Up by two. Well, I think if you're the outfielder defensively, if possible. You'd go to home? Yeah. Straight away. I'd, I'd straight away single. Normal. With a burner on second. Down by two. One inning to go. You charge it and go to home. Okay, we'll see what happens here. Two gentlemen to my right. We'll see if that happens. Let's see if it's the right call. Got it away. I used to have a heck of an arm in the outfield. Right now, I'm, I'm gonna counter against you two guys. I think if she's going, and I think she's gonna go with two outs, I think I'm gonna keep that lead runner at first base. Now the batter is... Uh... So they give her the automatic walk. And the young lady who made the mistake to put him in the hole is now at the plate. Rubakava is up, batting 432, 25 RBIs, three home runs, 11 doubles. Here comes one. Throw to first base. Let her score. So two outs, runner still on first and second. One run in, it's three to two. Here in the top of the sixth on Sportsnet, USA.net. So a runner comes in. So we have a pinch runner over at first base. Well, I thought we were gonna get a pitch runner. We don't. Thought we were going to. Alba comes up. Mercedes Alba, 365, 624 slugging percentage, 31 ribbies, six home runs. She can go yard easily. 
takes it down the pipe. Runner goes. So everybody was sleeping on that one. And when you sleep, the tooth fairy comes and leaves you no money. On the corners, two outs. Off the plate. A bobble, a miss, an error. One and two. Alba waits. Carranza plays with the ball. Looks in, gets the call. Rocks, brings it. Fouled away. Tying run at third base. Top of the six. Oh, yeah, it been a good one. Two runs, ten hits from out sack. Big air. Popped up. Is there room? No, there's not. If you knock it down the infield, you got to make it out or you're in a tie game. Off the plate. You do the snap throw, you walk out. The runner goes to second. Runner heads for home. They're going to do. The runner scores. Tying run at home plate in the rundown. So they get in a rundown. The runner from third breaks. They never look back to her. They keep the rundown alive long enough for the run to score. We are tied at three. Mental mistake, to say the least. Because if you make that throw to home plate after that runner from third breaks, now it's up to that runner at third to get out of a rundown. She's got to scamper only way. That's back to third. You're never going to get that runner in a rundown because then it's all important just to stay alive. Well, Ed. We head to the bottom of the sixth. We're tied at three here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Yeah, and all you can say is Falcons were their own worst enemies in that inning. An error and... Well, Ed, they were asleep when they threw the ball. Right back to Carranza in the circle with the runner off a of second base on a delayed steal. She finally realized they weren't gonna go after her, so she took third. So. Three to three. As Mount Sack scores two in the top of the sixth. Well, the last one we were here for was exciting. I guess they just keep going and saying, you know what? We're gonna work the nerves out of that old guy here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Fontella will start things off here in the bottom of the six, tied at three. That or they want to see how well we can put away all the equipment when it's, when it's dark. dark. Yeah. <laughs> Which has happened like twice before. Until it takes a strike. You just can't give Mount Sac, a team like Mount Sac, those kinds of chances. Yeah. Too good. Drops foul. And it's not that all is lost. Either team can still win this game, 
But when you get a team like Maltac down by two runs, you've got to yeah, you've you got to bear down. You can't make mistakes like that. Infield pop. Taken right there by Amanda Esquivel at second base for out number one. So Doan looking to get a hit. Tries to drop a foul. Fouled in the box. She ran into it while it was in the box. Therefore, she didn't run into a live ball. It's only a strike. Own won the count. Wings through a high, hey, look at me, fastball. It's like getting that beautiful ice cream cone and then just dropping it on the ground. Look at me. Off the plate for a ball, one and two's the count. If she gets on, she could be moving. Macias is on deck. Fouls that away. And a final just coming in. Canyons beats LA Mission, scoring in the bottom of the seventh inning. They edge LA Mission by a score of three to two. And for the Cougars, if they're gonna have any chance of doing something, they've got to win games like that. One, two, off the end. Little roller, trying to get the speed. Throwing away, it's in there. Turn to second. Right there, at another miscue by Mount Sack puts Doan on second. And just as we were saying with uh, Mount Sack or Cerritos, you, you can't let, uh, if you're Mount Sack, you can't let Cerritos back into this thing, not back into it, we're all tied up. You can't give them an extra chance because they've already shown they can get ahead of you by two runs. Now you're giving a gift. Macias looks at a ball. Jasmine Macias is a good hitter. And again, with Cody in the box, if it's going to be close, we know what might happen. Macias waits. Drives into left field. This could drop. It doesn't on a beautiful running catch by Martin in left. Oh, Flores in left. That's right, they got Martins in right. Flores in left makes it, goes into the gap. I thought it might have a chance to drop for out number two. Hit well. Third base person, Bastero, flied to center, lined to first, and then grounded out to second base. She's 0 for 3 today. Betting 360 this year. It's going to go down and caught as she tumbles and holds on to the ball for out number three. As Gabrielle Flores has looked, Acrobatic in left field for a Mount Sack. No runs on no hits, one air and one left on base. Well, we head to the seventh, knotted at three. It's Mount Sack three, Cerritos three here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Yeah, opportunity missed. Yep. And Glendale might be saying that about their possibility of uh, getting one of those play-in spots. Pasadena City College beats them by a score of 11 to three. 
Not a good thing for that team. Moore Park over Allen Hancock, eight to five. Bottom of the six. I thought this was already in run rule uh, territory earlier today. Now it's 19 to two. Santa Barbara over LA Pierce. So that, that game can't go farther than that. We gave you the LA Mission score. They lost to Canyon Spy score at three to two. Gusumnus River over Folsom Lake, seven to two. Fullerton College has come back to take the lead in the bottom of the sixth inning. They are leading Santiago Canyon four to three. Santa Ana ahead of Riverside now, bottom of the fifth inning, seven to five. We already gave you that score with uh, Cypress winning. Elac loses to El Camino, seven to one. Cabrillo, a team that uh, a couple seasons ago, or maybe it was last year, should have gotten a spot in the uh, regionals up there. Well, today, they beat San Mateo by a score of 5-1. to one. They've got uh, more than 20 wins, and they should be in there. Albo will start things off for Mount Sac here in the seventh. Your infield, Basurto over at third. Manalo at short. Cardenas at second. Landeros at first. Lazy fly ball. Macias comes in from right. Doan in center. Fontella in left. Velasquez catching. And on the mound still, Carranza. 19 and 9. That's the defense here in the seventh for your Cerritos Falcons. Sequoia's ahead of Reedley in the second game of their doubleheader by a score of 3 to nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning. Of course, that's a, the big shootout going on in the Central Valley. So you have a four-team race going on between them, Merced, and Fresno City. Fresno City loses two games today to Merced. So not, not good for the Bulldogs. Esquivel, Amanda comes up. Playing second base for Mount Sac. Struck out. Got a base hit and then pop to the catcher. Fouls that off down the right field line. So one for three today for her. It's it's only April, what is today's date? The ninth. Eighth? Ninth? See, I'm a day behind. It's it's only the ninth, but still a lot of important games. You have a chance to uh kind of clobber one of your competitors that's trying to climb up the uh, standings, you got to do that. Yeah, exactly. One of those teams trying to climb up, first off, you can't lose to any of the teams below you, and then you also have to uh, win when you can. Fouled away. Escabel's got two dingers, one three bagger, and nine doubles for the season. So she hits with power. And Flair. 2-2. Two, two. Fouls it back. So the Falcons need a win here, Mark, to keep pace with El Camino. El Camino won their game. And also to uh, make that uh, lead of Mount Sachs a little smaller. We don't know what's going on in the Compton-Long Beach game, but they're playing this afternoon. 2-2. Two, two. Strike three call. What a pretty pitch. Looked like you were opening up a new freeway with that one. Two down. Well, the gardener is up, Albert Robles. She's mowed the outfield today with the long ball. Thirty-three ribbies, five home runs, nine doubles, betting four fifty-three. Morgan looks at that one, it's high. Morgan New Bootler. Catcher for this Mount Sac team. 
and hit the snot out of a softball. Drives that one foul. Corey Nalen's probably saying on a windy day with dust in the air. I I'd love to have somebody that could do that for my nose right now. Allergies galore. Two down. Three, three. Top of seven. Everybody thought, everybody thought, even in the circle. Oh, I caught her looking. Didn't get the call. 2-1. Shot. Throw to first, and they stop Mount Sack. Defense galore. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. As we head to the bottom of the seventh, it's Cerritos 3, Mount Sack 3, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ed Ford, I, I, if you're, I don't know if you're looking at more uh, scores over there. But uh, one of the things that if you're Mount Sac, it's because you do have arms you can go to. Urbina this season is 8-5, and five, ERA of 1.18. Rubel Cava, 8-1, ERA 2.57. And then you go to the lady who started this game, Dallas Garcia, 6-0, ERA of 1.62 with a whip of 1.09. Tell you what, you know, if you like uh, banana splits, they got one because they got a flavor for every pitch that you can hit. Three pitchers you can come into the circle at any time and win a softball game for them. That's Mount Sac. That's why they're at the top of the heat. And yet you look at that team across the way, Cody's team, never give up, never say die. They were my team I picked last year. Yeah, much to the chagrin of Brad Pickler, looked at me and said, wait a minute, you call Cypress softball. What are you doing to me? Sorry, Brad, I thought they had the team last year that could win it all. So let's head to the seventh. All they need is one. Manalo will start things off. Takes that first one in the dirt. Marley coming up today, betting 383, walking into today's game, 30 RBIs for the sophomore shortstop for Cody's team. Just needs a hit right now. Off speed pitch for a strike, pretty pitch. One on one's account. Two home runs for Marley. Fouls away on the fist. High and away, two and two. Flores in left, De La Barcina in center, Martin in right for Mount Sac. Fouled away, staying alive. Manalo, all she wants to do is drop one short of somebody's feet. Mount Sac in their blacks with purple leggings. A little purple stripe down the side. Fouled away. Or, or maybe maroon. Hmm. Yeah, you better say maroon. Maroon? Yeah. Okay. Maroon and black.
Two two count. Up the middle. Tried to do just enough for a base hit. And that's what she got on the play. Pretty swing by Marley Manalo. Cody giving the signs. Landeros comes up. Corners squeezing the hitter. High off the plate. Landeros betting 253 coming into today's play. Rock the pitch. Down the middle for a strike. One was the count. Outfield on the move for Sack. Infield on the move for Mount Sack. Everybody, it's moving day. Everybody's looking for a vacant place. And Cerritos just wants to say, let us go home. Butts down. Throw to first, they get the runner there, but winning run is now at second base on a beautiful sack bunt. Absolutely what you need to do. So they have that runner, the winning run at second base, but you still need to have the next batter come up, Mark, and do something positive. Can't strike out, you can't hit a little weak grounder that uh, doesn't advance the runner and certainly not a pop-up. Well, the nice thing about the well-executed sacrifice though, Ed, is there's no double play possibility. So, you know, you've got at least two more at bats unless somebody hits a line drive at somebody or you've got the runner moving and, you know, the ball hits the runner. There is that possibility. Now, this is where I'm the crazy manager because I got my runner moving from second base. Pitch number two. I've got her going. Well, but remember we had Doan trying to steal second a couple innings ago and that uh, ended up as a caught stealing. We'll see. Velasquez up. Waits on that, takes the ball. Obviously, you don't win games by uh, sitting in the recliner with your feet up. Got to get out there and do something. Manalo, four stolen bases, caught once. Inside and tight. This could be a intentional, non-intentional walk. See if she'd go fishing. We'll see after this next pitch. Two knows the count. Ball three. A little surprised. I think I would just say now, point at him and say put her on first. 3-0 count. See if she's swinging. Ball four. Yeah, it was the intentional, non-intentional walk. Those weren't even close. Carbajal has walked. She singled for an RBI. Then she got on in an air her last time up as she went back to the circle. That's fouled out of play. And the Mountie's trying to set up the double play here, Mark. Yep. Oh yeah, you want to turn two now. Head this to inning number eight. One, one. 
fouled away. What a swing. Level, sweet. Carbajal was on it. Celeste batting 297. 14 huge RBIs this season for Cody and your Falcons. Trying to squeeze one out by one here at Nancy Kelly Field. O2. Not close. One and two. Black and maroon. Pure white. Foul ball. Cody reminds her players that there is one out. Got to be moving it's on the ground, Ed. That's right. There's no such thing as, you know, the double play is an automatic, so Mount Sack, if they get that ground ball, they need to turn it properly. Got to be moving. One and two. Fouled away. One and two. Tied at three, bottom of the seventh. Well, last time, Ed, we had a, another exciting game between Cypress and Cerritos. Cody's invited us to another one here against Mount Sac. High fly ball, left field. Doesn't travel as far as I thought it would. Nobody tags up and moves. Boy, when it first tuck off, I was hoping. Out number two. Didn't have the right sound, and you know we've been here before where Cerritos threatens in the seventh, but they can't push a run across. And it's, unless they can do it here, it looks like uh, the Mounties will take it to uh, inning number eight. Cardenas up, batting 160, takes his first strike. Huge hit for her if she gets it down. Because I tell you what, if it's going to be close, they're turning at third and heading for home. That's a base hit. See if she sends her. She stops her. Bases are juiced as Cardenas gets a single. Second hit of the inning. Wasn't uh, wasn't far enough for that to, uh, she'd have gotten gunned. Short, short hit to left field, left fielder coming in. I mean, that gives you even more uh, arm strength or velocity on the throw. Is that gonna drop foul? Well, for the memory of Dan Hay, of course he's still alive, but for the memory of Dan Hay, saw Dan Hay in this situation drop a bunt on the second pitch. That runner broke from third and they won the game. Bases loaded, two outs in the PGF. <laughs> Well, Rubikov is saying, eh, we don't need that. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a K here. High and away. One and two. Runners on the corners with a player in the middle. That's right, they're all loaded. Two out. Foul ball. Out of play. No! I thought it was going out of play. What a catch by 
the young lady that's been playing left field, Gabrielle Flores, never gave up. Ed, I gave up on that one. I thought it was going to be out of play, which it would have if she doesn't catch it. But she hauls it in for the third out. Yeah. Well, Cerritos leaves bases loaded on two hits, no errors, and three left on. We head for eight. It's Mount Sac three, Cerritos three, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Wow, what a game. What a catch. Yeah, it was. It really was because, Ed, it was going into unplayable, and she reached over. She hit the fence in foul territory, caught it when she hit it, pulled it in. Three runs, ten hits, two errors for Mount Sac. Three runs, ten hits, one error for your Cerritos Falcons here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ed, Albert, the old guy. Well, we're out for another extra inning game here on SportsnetUSA.net in Cerritos. Update some scores for you. Looks like Reedley and Sequoias have split their doubleheader. Sequoias taking the rubber game by a score of four to nothing. Final in six innings, Long Beach the Vikings run rule Compton that score 10 to 2 final in 6 innings. El Camino beat East Los Angeles 7 to 1. Cabrillo over San Mateo. We have a 3-3 game right here. Fullerton comes from behind and beats Santiago Canyon by a score of 4 to 3. So they protect their lead. Cypress wins, but uh, to no avail. Griego comes up. Shortstop for Mount Sac. Two eighty-eight when this game started. Eighteen ribbies. Doesn't walk. Doesn't strike out. Macias looks back, it's gone! Griego hits it, Macias takes off running, looks back and realizes, I'm running out of grass. And Mount Sack is up four to three. Yeah, we don't see that many home runs to right field here, but there was one. Yeah, as Albert said, that's, you know, if you look at the, the star-spangled banner, it's, it's blowing right out to right field. So that's going to bring up White. Audrey White playing first base, played a little right field. Big hopper up the hole, snag, flip the first. Sweet play over at short by Marley Manalo. Comes over to the hole, catches it, and gets out number one. Flores comes up. Gabriela Flores has played brilliant defensive softball today for Mount Sac. The left fielder has been outstanding defensively for Mount Sac today. Flashing leather, covering lots of yardage. Has a couple hits in this game. Fly ball. 
Doan's got that in center field for out number two. So a fly ball to right field. Gives Mount Sack that one run lead here in the top of the eighth. Slap shot. And like a good goalie, Manalo says you can't score. But that's a little too late as Mount Sack takes the lead on a big Home run to right field by Griego. They're now up four to three here on Sportsnet USA.net. Yeah, you can get those leads, but can you protect your lead? And we've seen uh, the lead that uh, Cerritos had disappear. And now they've got to come up with one run to keep this game going and a couple of runs to uh, win it. Well, last time we were in this situation against Cyprus, looked like Cyprus had the game won. And then Cerritos came up with three runs. They ended up beating Cyprus in extra innings. Very true. San Diego Canyon at Fullerton. As we told you, Fullerton won that game, so they stay solidly in first place in the OEC. They scored, San Diego had a three nothing lead after four, uh, after, after the top of the fourth. Then Fullerton scored two in the bottom of the fourth, one in the bottom of the fifth to tie it, and one in the bottom of the sixth to win that game. So Doan will start things off here in the eighth. Got on in the sixth with an air. Got caught stealing after she had a base hit in the fourth. Started the game off, popping out to the catcher. So if Cerritos can come back and win this game, then Long Beach and El Camino will be thankful because they can pick up some ground on Mount Sack. Strike at the knees. One and two. Fouled away, battling. One, two, trailing by one, bottom of eight. The Rock, down in the dirt, two and two. Alyssa in the circle for Mount Sack. Looking for that strikeout. Averages about five strikeouts per seven. Fouled away. Nice at bat. Nice fight here by Doan, refusing to get struck out. Doan takes her time. Everybody straight away. Outfield in a couple steps. Don't. Easy pop fly over to sh uh, the third. Espinoza says, I've got it. Called it as soon as it was in the air. Route number one. So Espinoza makes the catch. Oh 
Jasmine Macias comes up. Jasmine's been on base a couple times today, and then when she has, she's been able to get in scoring position. Takes that for a strike. When it was the count. Shadows creeping onto the infield. Inside, two and one. Rock and the Brigand, three and one. Put her on first, she will be on the move. 3-1 count. Needs that pitch to drive. Ball four. So Macias is over at first with one out. Sack talking in the dugout. Yeah. Natalie Basurdo looking at Cody, trying to get some idea of what she wants her to do. Infield halfway. So Sack playing in at the corners, halfway at second and short. Now they back up a couple steps. Cerdo. Ball goes past. Macias turns at second. Tying run is now at second base on a pass ball. They could have used that in the last inning. But here they go, runner at second base. Cerdo needs to put the ball in play. Down and away, 2-0. Oh. Cody's looking. If it hits the outfield, we'll see what she's got her runner doing. 2-0 pitch. Drive. Deep in the alley. It's off the wall. One run in. Cody's got her wheeling. But Cerno goes to second with a double. We're tied here in the bottom of the eighth. All I can say is, wow. And Ed, the thing that was interesting is if you watched Macias at second, she wasn't sure if the ball was going to get caught. She was standing on the bag when it was going over the left fielder's head. Cody's yelling, you need to be running. And they get in. So we're tied at four. Course here. You want another positive at bat. You got to at least get that runner. I mean, if you're going to make an out, you don't want to make an out, but if you're going to make an out, at least get that runner to third base. Manalo, Marley coming up. Outfield trying to figure out where they're going to play it at. Struck out in the first, popped out to second, flew out to right, and then last time up, got a big single. Looks like the outfield's pretty much straight away, Mark. Nice. 
4-4 in the eighth. Mount Sac scores in the top of the eighth on a huge home run to right field. Deep fly ball to left field. Can it stay? Oh, it doesn't. It goes foul. Close, but no cigar. Boy, you can't have one anyway. We're on a community college campus. So no, no tobacco allowed. Sack scores theirs in the fourth after it looked like Cerritos had a possibility in the bottom of the seventh. Then Cerritos says, well, you know what we'll do is our runner will walk, get the second on a pass ball, and then come home on a base hit just because Ed said he wants to take the equipment down in the dark I think they misheard you there Ed off the fist foul just so if you're out there both you teams Ed said yes we have done that not that we would prefer to do that Make it a positive at bat and get the runner at least to third base. Off the plate, two and two's the count. One and two's the count, I thought that was the second ball. I'm ahead of John Van Gaston over there. I thought it was ball two also. Yeah, so did I. They had a one up there to start with. Maybe John's getting ahead of me. It's in, turn the corner. This could be the winning run. The throw to the plate, Cerritos wins. Um, Five runs, 12 hits, one error for Cerritos, four runs, 11 hits, two errors for Mount Sack. Ed Ford, you kept saying you needed something positive. You got it there at the last at bat. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty unbelievable. But so you, the Falcons pull it off again. So the Falcons not only did it to Cypress the last time we were out here on SportsNetUSA.net, they do it to Mount Sack again with Ed, Albert, and myself as your Cerritos Falcons beat the number one team in their division. Mount Sack, five to four here on Sportsnet USA.net.